Hey everyone, it's Rocco, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of my earlier works, Westminster Abbey, located in London. So Westminster Abbey is a Gothic Abbey church, which is part of the Westminster World Heritage Site, along with St. Margaret's and the Palace of Westminster just across the street. Construction on the Abbey broke ground in 1245 CE, but the original is thought to date back even further than the 13th century. Construction lasted almost exactly 200 years, with the abbey mostly completed by 1517. Meanwhile, the iconic towers followed shortly after by 1745. The style of this medieval church is known as English Gothic, which went on to inspire later styles such as English Perpendicular Gothic, which was a distinctly British branch off of the Gothic style prevalent throughout Europe at the time. The only known craftsman credited with the design of Westminster Abbey was Henry Yavell. Yavell was one of the most prolific stonemasons of late medieval England and laid his legacy in stone on projects throughout Great Britain. Today, the architectural maintenance for the Abbey is overseen by the surveyor of the fabric of Westminster Abbey. This mouthful of an office was created in 1698 in order to preserve the architectural heritage for future generations. Now, some of you may be wondering why this is known as an abbey and not a cathedral. The difference is that an abbey is essentially a large monastic complex, including several buildings necessary to the daily lives of monks, whereas a cathedral is predominantly a standalone structure containing the seat of a bishop. Every royal coronation since that of William the Conqueror in 1066 has been held in Westminster Abbey, Countless royals are in fact buried here, as well as a handful of non-royalty who were given the distinguished honor of being interred in the abbey. Just a few of the more prominent figures laid to rest here include Charles Barry, who was one of the architects who designed the Houses of Parliament, and Sir Isaac Newton, Stephen Hawking, and even Charles Darwin. So just to help familiarize you with some of the terms used to describe and define cathedrals and abbeys, you have a cross-shaped plan, and the central axis is known as the nave. That's the primary hall that you would process down. And the two sides at, on the two short sides of the cross are known as the transepts. So you have two transepts, and they meet with the nave at the crossing. And beyond that, you have the semicircular end known as the apse, with several round chapels along the edges of those, and on Westminster Abbey specifically, you have the Henry VII Chapel, which was a later addition to Westminster Abbey. And then obviously, since this is an abbey, you have all the buildings used for the monastery, so that includes the chapter house, as well as other things like living quarters and cloisters, which is a garden area that is actually open to the public. And one other building of note on the Westminster Abbey complex would be the Jewel Tower, which is one of the only surviving aspects of the Palace of Westminster, also known as the Houses of Parliament, to survive to this day, and was actually designed by Henry Yavell, who designed prim primarily the nave of Westminster Abbey. Elsewhere on site, you also have St. Margaret's, which is included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site designation, and Parliament Square, featuring statues of various individuals, including one of, a famous one of Winston Churchill, and there's even one of Gandhi over there as well. I originally designed and built the Westminster Abbey piece in 2017. The piece debuted at the back-to-back -back Brick Live events in Glasgow and London. Straight after that, though, it was shipped back to the States, where it has been exhibited at Brick Universe shows ever since. The Abbey was the first Gothic church I had ever designed, so it was important for me to develop a proper technique to represent the flying buttresses. It's not uncommon for me to use a combination of new and old parts whenever I'm looking for new techniques, and the flying buttresses here were no exception in that regard. The flying buttresses are particularly interesting because they use a couple parts that I had never previously used in any work before this. So, specifically, you have the space wing plate, which has a tapered profile on either side, and lining several of those up back to back along the side of the nave, 
provides that slanting profile of the bottom half of the flying buttresses. But then for the structural element that proceeds to go into the building, I ended up using what are called Technic driving rods, which I believe are used as pistons in LEGO Technic sets, but don't quote me on that because my expertise is architectural and not automotive. But anyway, the driving rods have a ball on the end, which was the perfect spot to put a socket plate to attach to the ball and provide the correct angle for the slanted lead roof panels that line the entirety of the nave. Elsewhere on site, you have the octagonal chapter house, which at its center is accomplished using a series of octagonal bar frames to which you have clip plates attached along each face to accomplish the overall shape. And there are also a few chapels along the radius of the apse that are accomplished using these honeycomb technic barrel elements with stud flick shooters on top. And finally, there's the tower on St. Margaret's that features Lego rubber bands to bind the corner technic elements around the central spine of the tower, as well as to hold some loose parts that actually don't attach, but are simply held in place by the tension of the rubber bands. Thanks for watching everyone, and I really hope you've learned something watching this video. A special shout out to all my patrons over on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you're really helping me build the kind of self-reliance I need as an artist in order to create on my own terms in this day and age. And honestly, I couldn't be more grateful for your patronage. If you'd like to become a patron, you'll find the link to my Patreon page in the description below. You'll get immediate access to plenty of exclusive content, and you'll be the first to see my new work months before it's made public. You'll also get access to upcoming patron-only giveaways like signed prints, small kits with instructions, and custom printed commemorative bricks. So again, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Plenty more content coming for you guys very soon. Festina Lente.